Shanna Gardner was born into wealth. Her parents had money, lots of it. She was also raised in a devout Mormon home. From the outside, it seemed like she was living a very stable, normal life. She then met a man named Jared Bridegan during a trip to Florida. Jared was also a devout Mormon. They fell in love and got married in Utah in 2010. They began their lives together in Connecticut and began raising their twins, but then moved to Jared's hometown in Jacksonville, Florida for the health of one of their children. It was here in Florida where life changed for Shanna. Marital problems, allegations of cheating, and actions very inconsistent with her Mormon upbringing. This led to a divorce. This also led to endless battles concerning the twins. Shanna did remarry. She met Mario Fernandez Soldana at the gym where she worked out. They fell in love and got hitched. Jared also got remarried and started a family with his new wife. Then. Jared was murdered. Shanna skipped the funeral and moved to Washington State without her new husband. Then the killer, Henry Tenen, was arrested. Mario was arrested. And finally, Shanna was arrested, charged with murder, facing a potential death sentence. Shanna was in court today with her new husband and her attorney, Jose Baez. And tonight, we'll take a look at what happened in court. We'll take a look at the alleged motive in the case and the relationship between the two accused killers as we investigate the murder of Jared Bridegan. I'm Benny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. The man who killed Jared Bridegan had absolutely no motive. Henry Tennant is his name. No connection whatsoever to Jared Bridegan. No beef with Jared Bridegan. There was no reason for him to do it other than getting paid to do it. Acting as a hitman and setting him up and taking him out. But when you look for the motive, why would he do it? The only motive is money, is being hired to do it. There was nothing personal, there was no relationship, there was nothing. His life and Jared Bridegan's life did not intersect until the murder. That's when it happened. Now, Jared Bridegan loved his children. Absolutely loved his children. He's a father, wants to be in their lives. And this became, number one, the reason they were all living back in Florida. Um, one of his children had a medical condition, needed to live in that area that was best uh, for the health of the child, but wanted to spend time with his kids and started a family with his second wife, but does not exclude his children from his first wife. No way. That's not Jared Bridegan. He's a dad. And, and because you're not with mom doesn't mean you're no longer a dad. And he stayed in his children's lives. And this became a real point of contention and turned into a seven-year custody battle with his ex, Shanna Gardner. Seven years of litigation. It just never ends. And, and people ask me, oh, well, you know, when you practice law, why didn't you go into family law? That's why. It never ends. It never, ever ends. And there was a bitterness here um, that went beyond many of them. I mean, how many times were they in court? Time after time after time after time. Can't work things out, can't figure things out. And you don't know who to blame for that. Uh, but my guess is... During the course of this trial, prosecutors will probably be looking at Shanna Gardner, the one who wanted control of those children. And she couldn't because Jared Bridegan was a great father and wanted to be in their lives. Now, that relationship obviously broken and could never be fixed and the bitterness continued for seven years. But I wanna talk about another relationship. Is she gonna have trouble with husband number two, her co-defendant in this murder case. I have a suspicion that, oh yeah, this is gonna be big trouble inside the courtroom. You see, the hitman is somewhat connected to her husband, Mario, but not directly connected to her. 
the only viable defense she has here is to throw Mario under the bus along with the hitman. Mario was doing that. I don't know why he did it. Maybe he did it because he thought it would impress me or it would make me happy, but I didn't want him dead. Oh, no. That's got to be the defense. And they're both going to be tried together in this case. And, I, and I, it's going to be a strange dynamic. Prosecutors love this, by the way. We, we love to be, I'm a former prosecutor, love to be on one side of the courtroom, and they're on the other side. I'm pointing the finger at them, and they're pointing the finger at each other. That's like best case scenario for a prosecutor. So for those of you who don't know the, the, the whole backstory here, because it is, it is layered, it's somewhat uh, complicated, trying to work through it, Matt Johnson, Court TV crime and justice correspondent, has the story for us. Jared Bridegan appeared to have it all. A new job as a Microsoft executive, living in sunny Florida with his wife Kirsten and four children. We had just had London, she was six months old. So things were good. Kirsten had two children with Jared, London and Bexley. They also shared custody of his nine-year-old twins from a previous marriage. On the week that we did not have the oldest two kids at our home, Jared would take them out to dinner. It was referred to as date night in this agreement. The agreement kept Jared and Kirsten in Florida. Bride again and his ex-wife, Shanna Gardner-Fernandez, were in a bitter custody battle. What was that relationship like, he and his ex-wife? The relationship between us and his ex-wife um, was not cordial. Our communications were always in writing because there was not mutual trust between the two households. On February 16th, 2022, Jared had one of his scheduled daddy date nights. After dinner, he dropped off his twin daughter and son at his ex-wife's home in Jacksonville Beach, Florida and headed home to St. Augustine. On the way, he stopped to get his two and a half year old daughter Bexley ice cream. She was in the back seat of his SUV. He then called Kirsten telling her he loved her and would be home soon. How did you learn something was wrong? As time started ticking by and the time that they're usually home passed, I, I can't even describe it, but like, I just knew something's not right. Her fears became reality after an officer answered Jared's cell phone, telling her Bexley was unharmed, but they needed her to come by the police station to hear about her husband. They later on that night told me that he had been shot. Where did this happen? Because he usually gets in the car and just drives home. I had talked to him. Jared was not a victim of any robbery gone wrong or carjacking. Police say he was the victim of a targeted attack on a one-way road he traveled often. Jared came across a tire police say was intentionally placed right here in the middle of the road in the sanctuary neighborhood of Jacksonville Beach, Florida. That's when someone came out of these woods and ambushed the father of four, killing him on the spot. For almost a year, no answers. Then in January 2023, a break in the case. Henry Tenen was arrested for the following crimes. Conspiracy to commit murder. Second degree murder with a weapon, accessory after the fact to a capital felony and child abuse. Now investigators say that Tenen has pleaded guilty in the case and admitted to shooting Brightigan. Henry Tenen pled guilty to murdering Jared Brightigan. Henry Tenen has admitted that he in fact was the shooter. According to court records, Tenen once lived in this house that was once owned by Brightigan's ex-wife's current husband. And now investigators have charged both the ex-wife, Shanna Gardner, and her husband, Mario Fernandez Saldana, with first-degree murder. We will be filing a notice of our intent to seek the death penalty. Prosecutors call Gardner the mastermind behind the murder. Both Shanna and Mario have denied any involvement. Meanwhile, Jared's widow says that she suspected them from the beginning. Had you suspected that Mario was also involved in all of this? From very, very early on, um, I felt, like obviously I didn't have any evidence, but I felt that Mario Fernandez and Shannon Gardner would be involved as, somehow. 
And big day in the courtroom today. And afterwards, uh, Shanna's attorney spoke. She's being represented by a man who's had a lot of success winning cases that people thought could not be won. I'm talking about Jose Baez. Take a listen to what he had to say after court today. Well, the prosecution thinks they have enough evidence to seek the death penalty against him. Well, I've heard that before. It's a death penalty case. Seems a little confident there, doesn't he? Let's bring in Court TV crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson. Joins live from outside that courthouse in Duval County, Florida. Matt, great to see you tonight. Um, let's start with the, the couple, right? You've got uh, Shanna and Mario, um, both in court today. They haven't been together in quite some time. What, what, what happened today? Yeah, big day in court. Nice to see you, Vinny. Happy Friday. So it was a big day because the former lovebirds turned co-conspirators, according to the state, and accused killers. They were reunited, and um, they didn't seem too happy about it. This is the first time that they've been in the same room since they were estranged and separated, and since his arrest and her arrest for the murder of her ex-husband, Jared Bright, again. Now, um, they also appeared very different in court. Take a look at your screen right there. He's in that jail suit that is appointed to him where she's wearing street clothing. At some point, she was smiling with her attorney, Jose Baez. He was pretty much stone-faced, Vinny. Yeah, th th there's uh, quite a difference. I think what he's going to learn here is that when you marry a trust fund woman and you end up as a co-defendant, you will get the short end of it. She can pay for the big defense, uh, which is what's happening, and She's going to point the finger right at him, and he is the one that's going to get the brunt of it from the prosecution and probably from Jose Baez at the same time. Right, you know, and the situation with this is that it's a triangle, right? Because you also have a third co-defendant, Henry Tennant, who we talked about in that piece, who has already pled guilty, and he is required, according to his plea deal, he doesn't have life on the table. What he has is 15 years, but he has to testify against his co-conspirators, according to the state. And, um, you know... They are both facing the death penalty at this point in time, and Shanna has now joined her husband in waiving her right to a speedy trial. Okay, so speedy trial is waived, so this thing is not going to move super fast. Uh, I understand that. And something is happening here, right, with the, the um, discovery in the case. There were some issues involving things that were placed on the server that were supposed to be accessible but were not supposed to be there. Can you go through and sort of explain that situation for us? Yeah, that's really an important key part of this case right now, and that's going to determine the projection of the case, for that matter, and what we're going to see next. So you have Mario Soldana, who says that he hired an attorney before he was even arrested. Um, this is months ago. And then he's arrested. They take his laptop, they take his cell phone, and the contents are downloaded and uploaded to the state server. Well, that includes, according to the state, they said it today, some of the communication. So that was uploaded to the discovery. And that's what Jose Baez was actually talking about today, why he couldn't access all the discovery. And this is exactly why Mario Soldana's attorneys say that they want these prosecutors kicked off the case because they say it's a violation of his rights, that it was attorney-client privilege, and they don't know how to remedy it. So, um what did the judge have to say about any of this? Was the judge concerned about all of this, or is the judge trying to figure out a way around all this? The judge is very concerned, and we have a clip from that very important part of this hearing today. Let's take a listen. Those emails that they concede are attorney-client privilege were uploaded to Next Point by the state's own admission. They have been uh, able to be accessed at a minimum by anyone at Next Point, by law enforcement, and by the state attorney's office. I'm not prepared to respond today as to whether anyone saw it or didn't see it. I, I don't know that. Uh, but to answer your question, yes, there's one document that they 
intend on using, but uh, that they've read and they've reviewed, and, and the court uh, and defense and the state discussed in chambers this morning. And I think that's what is really the crux of what the next step is going to be. We have received the discovery, and uh, which consists of a thumb drive, and in addition to that, and um, a uh, external hard drive as well. I, I, of course, we haven't reviewed the contents of it. There is one thing I think that the court should be aware of, um, since we had the issue, the next point issue, come up. It was it was immediately shut down, so we were. Not, we did not have access to, to further discovery post the, the date of it being shut down. What is that date? I believe it was November 15th, Your So right there, you have a very critical moment and a key part of this case and how it's going to end up, Vinny. Like, do the prosecutors stay on the case? Do they not? The judge says maybe a special judge has to be appointed to listen to all the evidence because she doesn't want to hear it because she is going to be presiding over the trial, as far as we know. So um, this is really key to determine what happens next, and that's still up in the air. Yeah, that's problematic because this is these are death penalty cases death penalty cases are the most litigated cases in our entire system of justice every issue um, is a potential problem everything has to be done 1000 percent right cross the t's dot the i's etc um, so my understanding and one of the other issues uh, presiding over this you mentioned that shanna waived her right to a speedy trial I mean, that's, that's another potential problem here, right? If you're saying, well, we're waiving the speedy trial because you did this with the discovery, it becomes problematic. Well, it becomes problematic, but it was also expected because Jose Baez was hired by this very wealthy family to defend Shanna Gardner, the heiress to this paper fortune out west. Um, so he just got the case a couple weeks ago when she was extradited from Washington State here to uh, Florida. And he hasn't had an opportunity because of those questions about discovery with Saldana's case to review all of the discovery. He just got the rest of it today. So it's really in their best interest to waive that right. And that's what she did today. Good morning. Morning. I've been handed a form that's titled Unlimited Waiver of Speedy Trial. Have you gone over this form with your attorney? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and it has your signature on it. Did you sign it indicating that you have, in fact, gone over this with your lawyer? Yes, Your Honor. The form indicates um, that you've reviewed both the advantages and disadvantages of waiving, waiving speedy trial. Is that true? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and has anyone threatened you or coerced you to get you to waive speedy trial? No, ma'am. Promised you anything? No, ma'am. Okay. I will find that the waiver speedy trial is freely and voluntarily entered. And Vinny, that's really also an important moment because that's one of the first times we've heard from Shanna since she's been arrested. And after that, she was smiling with her attorney, as we know, Jose Baez. Um, but he also had another big win in court because the court granted him and, and the team there access to what was discovered with the grand jury, those proceedings and the testimony from that. And what's interesting, you say that he just got uh, the rest of the discovery today, um, and yet after court he was talking about how there's no evidence in this case, but he hasn't reviewed all the evidence yet. Um, but I guess what he's seen so far he doesn't consider uh, um, important or conclusive in, in the case against his client. So big day today, so what, what's next here? We have a couple big days ahead as well. So coming up later this month, Mario Soldana will be at this courthouse here behind me, and they're going to be again talking about the whole issue with the discovery and uh, that, that privilege that could have been violated. So that's going to be on the 11th. And then come next year, that's the next time we see um, Shanna Gardner in court, his wife, that's going to be on February 2nd, and that's going to be more scheduling. So. By then, we should uh, get an idea if there's going to be a trial date set, but um, Wheels does Justice probably turning pretty slow here on this one. I think so. I, I really do, because I think that everything will be fully litigated, number one, and I think number two, this issue of attorney-client privilege and the prosecutors is real messy 
real messy in a case where you're seeking the ultimate uh, penalty. Matt Johnson down in Jacksonville, Florida, Duval County tonight. Great to see you, Matt. Thanks so much. Have a good weekend. Thank you.